Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly recap. In the weekly recap I like to go over any news related to the old school RuneScape community this week. Now we did get a content update today, just some small parts of poll number 71, mainly focused on the chambers of Zarek. It does not appear that there is a Q&A this week so we're not going to be going over that. However, this week we did end up getting the giant yearly survey. So it's your opportunity to give Jagex some feedback on what direction you want to see the game going in. Beyond the content update, I wanted to go ahead and talk about a few things that happened in the community this week. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's get started. Now first up here we have the first batch of changes from poll number 71. I'm just going to quickly go over the poll results again, as we just briefly did it last week. Now this poll was mainly focused on the Grotesque Guardian, the Chambers of Zarek, and the Gauntlet. Now pretty much everything did pass, the only thing that didn't pass was question number 26, which was should the Twisted Ornament Kit be made tradable, which will be a new reward from the Chambers of Zarek challenge mode. However everything did end up passing, there will be a link in the description to the poll results if you want to look at all of them. So today's content update is called Vanguard Improvements. Now the Vanguard room has been something I personally and a lot of people have been skipping for a long long time just because it's one of the more challenging uh, raids room at least for beginners. Now first up here there have been some adjustments to the Vanguard's stats. In general the defense has been lowered and the hit points has been increased. This makes the fight reset mechanics less risky for smaller raiding parties. The high magic defense of the melee vanguard has been swapped with its melee defense so that it fits neatly into the established combat triangle. They have also reduced the vanguard's aggression range and shifted one of the spawn positions to match the room layouts in other vanguard rooms. Uh, lastly here you are also guaranteed to get at least one overload potion from vanguards now which was previously not the case. Now, I can't comment on here because I actually never have done vanguards because I always skip them. Now this isn't the end of the vanguard changes, there are still a few features that aren't implemented today which did pass a poll but are going to take longer to implement. Now they have made a few general changes to the chambers of Zarek. Now when you finish a raid your best time is going to be tracked and will appear on screen. This information will also be visible in the adventure log in your POH. Scavenger beasts now uh, drop a more reasonable amount of Sicily and in darkened juice. Probably less Sicily and more in Darkened Juice, I would imagine. Now we've also altered the positions of the crystals in one of the crab rooms to not be as much of a hindrance on raid efficiency. I think another one they're talking about. <laughs> and they've also fixed an issue where players would be hit by Vespula's melee attack if the Abyssal Portal died. Okay, so that is it for the Chambers of Zarek. Now they made a few other minor changes. The most important one and the one that people were complaining the most about is the support tutorial can now be toggled via the bank settings menu, which means you can turn off that little question mark in the top right corner. And I would highly suggest you do it. Probably the most clutch update of the week. <laughs> okay, so the Ceridum's tier can now be obtained from the last man standing shop. I don't know why we keep putting things back there until the botting issue gets reduced or solved, I don't know. I think they kind of just like trolling people who are merching these items. <laughs> now once again the price of blooded items have been recosted again. The Ancient Ice Sack is now 500 points, the Entangle Sack is worth 250 points, and the Vengeance and Teleport Sacks are now worth 350 points apiece. Now as always there are other minor quality of life changes and bug fixes, but that is pretty much it for content updates this week. Alright so next up here we have the Giant Yearly Survey. Uh, is meant to kind of gauge what players want from the future of RuneScape and the direction that they should take. Now I know a lot of people don't want to do this survey, that's totally fine. I did end up going through the entire thing so I just wanted to show you some of the more interesting questions that they asked. Now first up here I kind of sped through the survey again because I already did it so the answers aren't necessarily what I personally answered the first time. And just because they're asking a question in a survey here does not mean that is something necessarily they're thinking of implementing but it does mean that it is kind of on the table to some degree. So there were a lot of generic questions about the game, for example, what skills you like the most, which ones you think need improvement. Now one thing that came up quite a few times during the survey is a new skilling method. There was a question that asked what kind of skilling updates you would like to see. One is for new training methods, another one would be for a new skill altogether. Their examples being sailing, necromancy, or warding. They had a question about new skills from RuneScape, for example summoning or dungeoneering. Increasing the level cap past 99 to existing skills, for example bringing it to 120, and then skilling bosses and skilling guilds. They even had a direct question about which of these skill ideas interest you the most. There is warding, which we already know, creating magical equipment, artisan, which is one that was polled back in 2015 I think, which would be kind of like the Slayer equivalent for skilling. There is sailing, which is exploring randomly generated areas. Uh, summoning, which is from RS3. Dungeoneering, which is from RS3. Archaeology, also from RS3. Necromancy, 
Not sure actually, that might just be a new thing altogether. Summoning the dead to help you in combat. Engineering, building machines that can automate other basic activities. Ooh, not a fan of that one. Regency and governance, which would be building and growing settlements or none of the above. Where the hell is pet ranching, what the fuck? Okay, another really interesting question I found here uh, that I personally would be very interested in is how interested would you be in having quests be replayable? I think that'd be awesome, especially for the speedrunning community. And if it is possible, I don't really see why not. Obviously, you wouldn't get the reward again. So I think it'd be fun to add a whole new dynamic of competing for the best time in quests. I think that'd be a lot of fun. We also have a question about future quests. For example, how interesting would you find the idea of a new quest series based on the following topics? Uh, we have the Void Knight, the Tsar, Corporal Beast, Werewolves, the Eastern Lands, Mermaids for some reason, and the Wilderness. Okay, another really big one here is they ask some questions about the art style of the game and they throw in a couple images here and a couple of them are from OS Remastered. One of them I think is from OS HD back when that was a whole thing. And then some of them are from the base game. So the first image here we have is just regular RuneScape. Now the question that they ask is a little bit misleading. The question is something like how do you feel like this art style fits in old school RuneScape or which one feels more like old school RuneScape? Which obviously I mean the base style is probably going to feel like old school RuneScape the most because because that's what it is. But anyway, we have Old School RuneScape Remastered down here. Uh, the picture with a friend, I think, is OSHD from a couple years ago. And then we have another picture of OS Remastered. And then we have a picture of the base game, but I think in Zaya. Now, I personally find this really interesting because it seems like they are at least considering OS Remastered or HD clients in general. Now, obviously, I don't know that for sure, but they did include it in a player survey about the future of RuneScape. So I think it's a good indication that they are not totally against the idea and OS Remastered could actually be given the green light to go ahead and develop fully. Now my personal thoughts on OS Remastered are mostly positive. I'm not quite sure what I would do if that client was available. I'm not really sure if I'd make videos with OS Remastered. I don't know. I just think it would maybe be a little bit too divisive and might kind of ruin continuity between different videos different content creators, stuff like that. But I think it'd be awesome for just individuals to use and I personally would mess around with it a lot. But I really do think it could attract a lot of new players because I know the initial impression of RuneScape is probably dated, is dated graphics and no one really gets deep enough into it to really see the depth of gameplay that is available. Now they do have a few questions about the current polling system, including one about whether the pass rate of 75% is too high. And then at the end here, we just have a few more general questions. One about whether they think Jagex is a fun company. Not really sure how we would know that. And there seems to be a big kind of disconnect between Jagex as a company, which I wouldn't really consider fun exactly. And then the people who work on the front lines, like the moderators, it'd be kind of nice if they separated those two entities a bit. But anyway, those are the more interesting questions from the yearly survey. I would recommend you go ahead and do it, but if not, that is a highlight. And finally here, I want to go over a bit of news related to the old Scrooonscape community, but things that aren't necessarily content updates. Now first up here, we have the seventh person to reach 200 mil all in every skill, and that is a player by the name of Harmony. I know we are kind of on number seven now, but I, God, I think we need to congratulate everyone because that achievement is insane. When you compare it to achievements in every other game, like the time investment for that is not even comparable. So another big congratulations. It looks like we're probably going to get a couple more in the next month or two. Another minor update is the 14 day membership thing is back on Twitch Prime again. So if you have Amazon Prime and thus Twitch Prime, you can get 14 days of membership for free. Everyone can do it, including the bots, unfortunately, but whatever, might as well take advantage of it if it is available. Now, one thing that was talked about a lot this week, and I wouldn't really say brought into light because, well, most people are already aware of it, and it has existed since the beginning of time, that is toxicity in RuneScape, or I guess toxicity in games in general. And I think it's a really good discussion to have. Now, there's a lot of posts this week from stuff like Castle Wars, Saboteurs, uh, to stuff like RuneScape clans like Frontline, Doxing, and Harassing other players. Uh, we have content creators getting banned again. It's something that is just kind of rampant, it seems, in RuneScape. First up here, we have to establish that RuneScape is not an isolated case here. People are toxic in every game. Like, surprisingly, the most angry I've been recently playing a video game was Rocket League. Somehow, even though there's no voice chat, even though you can barely even type, Someone managed to just piss me off so much playing that game. And they were being extremely toxic. It just is in every single game.
I guess you can make the argument that it's kind of worse in RuneScape, but I think people who are very deep into their online community kind of always seem to think that way. Like when I played League of Legends a lot, people thought that was the worst community. I hear people will say Dota is the worst community. Overwatch, I mean, like it just kind of goes everywhere. With that said though, reading through some of the things that, I mean, especially some of these clans are doing, it's pretty horrific. It's so toxic, immature, some of it's actually illegal. And the only way to really get it to stop is to be able to punish these players effectively. Now these are just allegations, there's no definitive proof because images online can be doctored, we don't really know for sure, but if it is true, it's pretty scummy. This bullshit will not stop happening unless people actually face consequences for it, and I think JGX as a company will really need to step up to the plate and actually handle these things. Now there actually is a response from JGX stating that they do think it's unacceptable behavior, but they do need to do their own investigation, you know, which is fair. So it is good that some of these things are brought to light, and we can only hope that people don't immediately forget about it after a week or two. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for the weekly recap. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I always appreciate it. If you leave the video a like, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.